Welcome back everybody. Today we're looking at the Bravo Boost Unit. Now when I received this unit I didn't quite know what to make of it because I haven't seen anything quite like this before. The first thing you'll notice about this unit is that it's transparent. You can actually see the circuit board and the transistors, the tubes and connectors which you know is quite quite cool I gotta say. Now a lot of people might misinterpret this to be a pedal. It's not actually meant to be used as a pedal. The unit uh, has a tube on it which allows you to get that natural tube tone which is something quite sought after by most musicians especially if you're already using some gear that has that does work with tubes. It's a 12 AU7 tube which can be replaced with a tube of whatever flavor you prefer. If you want to take it out you simply pull it out and put another one back in. It's as simple as that. Um, but the unit actually gives you some additional tonal flexibility. You'll notice that this unit does not have any place on it for a battery. So you have to use it with an adapter. The adapter is a 12 volt adapter and it actually is included with the unit when you purchase it. The back of the unit has a mini toggle switch which allows you to turn the unit on and off. And you control the tone by using the three knobs in the front of the unit, which is volume, gain, and tone. The actual physical knobs are made of brushed aluminum, which gives it kind of a hi-fi feel to it. Um, I would have preferred that the knobs have the notch indicated a little bit more um, obvious, obviously, because I find that with the glare you don't necessarily see the notch. It becomes a little bit harder to see. But they did include a physical notch in the sweep so when you turn the tone knob and you're at 12 o'clock you actually see, feel a little bump there to know that you're at 12 o'clock which gives you a little bit more of a physical reference so basically what can this unit offer you for seventy dollars US you're basically getting a unit which allows you to extend your tonal possibilities um, you can actually put this into your effects loop or plug it straight into the front of your amp the thing that you need to remember though is that when you turn off the unit there's no sound coming through so it's not like a, a, a true bypass pedal that you can actually bypass the unit when it's turned off you get no sound so if you actually want to use this in a chain of effects and you want to turn this off or remove it from the chain of effects you can't do it unless you unplug the unit okay now that being said I feel that when you buy this unit, especially for people who like to mod their amplifiers, if you if you have a vintage Marshall or something similar and you want to be able to get more tonal reach, there's no need to bring this to an amp tech and pay him eighty dollars an hour. You can actually just put this into the loop and now you have tube tone, extra gain, more bass on tap, and more flexibility. And you don't have to mod your amplifier and ruin its resale value. I find that uh, after using this unit for a little while, I can see why you'd want to keep it permanently plugged in if you want to be able to go and get that extra reach. So without further ado, let's plug this baby in and see what kind of tones we can get out of it. Okay, we're going to be playing through a Fender Supersonic 22 combo, and I'm going to be playing through a Squire Telecaster. Let's start off with the clean channel here. <laughs>
So you can see that even with the saturation of the overdrive of the amplifier, the notes still ring out a lot more truer, I find, with this unit and give you more of that, a little bit of a, a hi-fi feeling to it. So let's go ahead and switch back over to the clean sound. And this time, we're going to take the gain here and we're going to pump it up to about a uh, 3 o'clock position. <laughs> So it does introduce a little bit more gain and when you say gain here, we're not talking about a distortion pedal, we're just talking about a little bit more coloration in the tone. So I'm going to bring it all up to 12 o'clock, uh, to uh, the maximum on the tone, on the gain channel. The tone's at 12 by the way. Uh, the tone will introduce a little bit more high end or, or top or bottom end depending on how you have it dialed in. And we'll look at that a little bit later. So just to remind you, that was on the clean channel of the amplifier. So you can get a little bit more of that grit with um, the gain punched all the way up. Let's go into the gain channel now. So the gain of the amp remains the same. The gain of the Bravo unit is all the way up. Let's hear what that sounds like. As you can see, it gives uh, the amplifier a little bit more uh, punch. Uh, for a Fender amplifier, you already don't have you know, the ability to get the gain tremendously high on the amplifier, although the Supersonic does give you a little bit more flexibility in that respect. But I still find that it makes the sound bloom a little bit better and gives you a little bit more definition. So let's look at the tone knob here now. Uh, we're going to bring it up a little bit more. We're going to bring it to the 3 o'clock position and you'll see what it does. Basically, it gives you a little bit more top end. And we'll bring that to the clean on the amplifier so you can hear that. <laughs> to the nine o'clock position you'll get a little bit more bass out of it or a little bit less high ends <laughs> So let's bring everything back over to the 12 o'clock position and even if we bring up the volume to about the um, 3 o'clock position it doesn't get extremely loud but it does give you a little bit more coloration so let's look at that. <laughs>
So I highly recommend you check out the Bravo Audi unit and uh, play around with it a little bit and see what kind of tones you can discover. Thanks for watching.